So you got yourself a nice little air compressor in your garage, but you find you need just a little bit more capacity. In my, in my case, I am getting ready to sandblast some tractor parts. This tractor hood inside, outside this is an old Ford 2N tractor. It's my grandpa's. Check out my tractor videos. They're, they're my favorite to make at least. The first thing I did was this. This is what comes up from the compressor and fills the tanks. This hose here was plugged right into this housing and then that's what goes into the tank there. And then they're connected by this copper tube and it goes into the tank down there. And then there's that other metal hose here that, that comes off from the compressor that actually does pressurizes the air. So the first thing I tried to do was remove this thing because it looks like a quarter inch and it looks like I, I thought I could just put a quarter inch fitting in there and boom, I'm in. Well, that didn't work because I'm pretty sure they read Loctite at that or something because I had my uh, impact on that for a while, nothing. So I decided I was gonna get a T and this one was connected here, like I said. Anyway, I thought I'd connect a T to give myself an outlet. And basically what I wanted to do was have a way to expand my tank. So I can take this and go to another tank. Um, I used to do this a little bit just by using this second line on the front, but that's behind the regulator. And I, I want this secondary tank to get to full pressure. So, and then I can just make use of these two lines to, and then regulate that air however I want. Another thing I did because I'll be sandblasting is I put in this little uh, water separator thing, which is kind of cool. So if, if you get water in your line, you should start building up there and you can just release that out. And also, while I'm talking about water, if you got one of these sitting in your garage and you haven't purged the water out of it lately with the release valve underneath, do that right now, go do it. Because I'm gonna show you what all, how, all the water that came out of mine in this picture right here. <coughs> See that, that just ran and ran and ran. So I need to be way better about maintaining mine. Otherwise they're just gonna rust from the inside out. Anyway, so what I did, you and you don't have to do this, but I picked up a new, propane tank, kind of the big 11 gallon size. Propane tanks are made for, I think I read up to like 375 PSI, because I guess when there's propane in it, in this hot sun, they can really get pretty high in pressure. And they have release valves and stuff. If, if it gets up too high, it should release. But So this works really good as an air tank, because if it can hang, if it can hold tight at like 350 PSI, that's plenty for what I need. So what I did is, obviously this is made for propane, and when t typically when you plug in your propane hose, it's just got the little hole that comes out for propane because you're not gonna need a ton. So I went to the hardware store and got this little propane fitting. Now this one is nice because it says for full flow. So if you look through it, that whole thing is open. Now you can just grab an old one of these off a of regulator you have. You probably want to drill the hole out inside of there just a little bit because it's pretty small. Or just go get a new one and get a full flow so I don't got to worry about that. But anyway we're just going to take this and get it hooked into here. I'll show you how that's done and then we'll hook these two together and I'll show you how these uh, this expansion tank works. Okay, so I took out the first piece and got some Teflon tape on it. That's all we're going to need for Teflon tape. You don't need it on the inside. It's got this one has the little rubber gasket plus the copper or the brass should snug up in there tight. Let me show you what we got going on here. 
and how this works because it's a, this this particular one is a little different than you might think so we pretty much need to go in like that and your barbecue typically has the big plastic thing that goes on this outside and pushes something like this in there this one works different there's actually threads on the inside that you can go into as well to put one of these in and the, I was telling James this earlier. It's funny because this is one of the few times in life that lefty is tidy and righty loosey. So you just kind of, oh yeah, you can hear a little bit of the pressure here. We'll go ahead and, I drained most of it, but, but there was a little bit left in there. So we'll go in there. We obviously know we're, we're hitting, so. See how well I can one hand this, but we can fast go fast through this if we need. Let's get this in there nice and tight because it, it's not something that I'll be taking out. Oh, what am I thinking about this? Little valve came with a, a little tightener, so it just kind of fits on there, there and let you hand tighten it. Oops, lefty tighty. So we'll just get that on there nice and tight. All right, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna leave that. Well, we'll put it back on there in just a second. I'm gonna give it just a little, little bit with the wrench just to know we're good. I'll never get it off by hand now, but we'll stick this back on there. So it's there. And then we are going to take, oh, there, that's where I put it. Just one of these air connectors. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight jobby. And this one actually is righty tidy because now we're in air territory. The nice thing is, is the, most of these regulators have come off onto a quarter inch, which is exactly what you need. So we'll just get this, tighten her down. Oh wait, I'm turning that. I gotta, I gotta hold this one with the other end. So okay, that is plenty tight. We're ready to go. That's the expansion tank, and then over here, I put in a little valve as well. I mean, this, this has pressure. So here, let's pressure. Let's let that pressure off. So yeah, that's got pressure now, but since there's nothing in it, nothing's happening. So this is the mistake you gotta be careful about. Don't just go plugging this sucker in there with air or you're gonna be, the other side's gonna flip around about a billion miles an hour and you might end up with a cut on your leg like I did. So we're gonna be smart this time and plug this side in first. All right, that's plugged in. Now we'll take and plug this side in. That's one of those just press-ins. So now we can pressurize this other tank. And here, I'll just turn this off so because it's going to kick on if I don't. Watch this equalize out. Here we go. Oh. Pressurize the hose because remember I closed this. So let's let this go ahead and pressurize. There we go. That's equalized. So we're going to go ahead and run this and get back up to pressure. It's gonna take a while. And one thing I do realize is that this is gonna work this motor a little bit more than normal. You think about it, this, I mean, if I, if I end up using this and this ends up wearing out, then at that point I go ahead and just buy me a, a bigger air compressor. But I'll use it until this dies. Um, but th that's the nice thing about the valve too, is I can mostly, most of the time, just use the four and a half gallons here and then only when I have a big job like the sandblasting or something else, 
I can just turn on the expansion tank. Boop. And the plan is, is just to put this tank right up behind there so it's out of sight and I can just turn it on and use it when I want. I, this never really moves. I kind of much, pretty much leave it here all the time. This goes up into my reel that hangs from the ceiling, which if you haven't done that, highly recommend for both air and power. Man, that's handy. So anyway, we'll get this charged up and I'll show you. That. To pressure. I'm going to go ahead and get this moved by shutting that off, closing this, and then I can, there will still be pressure in this line, but it won't blast forever if I unplug these now. So go ahead and get those unplugged and move that back. All right, tank is back there out of sight. I'll just leave it off for now. Wait for the big jobs and we're all ready to roll. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again soon as you join me and other people on Hey Projects. See you next time.